Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. You can as well call me the Farm Girl KE. I am very passionate about agriculture and I love helping you as a farmer who is starting your agri business, who is already nourished and you want to increase your profits, and as somebody who is aspiring to join this agricultural industry. So, welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be talking about what you need to do to increase the amount of profits that you're going to gain from your agricultural practices. We have been talking about how to grow our crops, how to take care of them. We have talked about managu, strawberries, spring onions, parsley. We have talked about passion fruits and now it is time for us to look into another direction so that we can increase the amount of profits that you are going to take uh, from our agri practices you need to do an adequate research of whatever crop that you're going to grow the first and the foremost thing is the market because most of the time you will find that we have grown our crops we have done our best to deliver the best quality but we do not have the person to take this produce too so what happens is that we've experienced losses because we do not have somewhere to sell so instead of starting with your planting session know who you are going to uh, sell to it doesn't have to be like the entire crop that you're going to grow but at least half of what you're going to grow have a ready market for that you can have two to three markets that you're going to be targeting so that by the time the produce is ready you already know where you're going to take your crops it is not like you're running after you have uh, grown your crops uh, for example you have strawberries they have already ripened you do not know where you're going to sell this produce is going to be going to waste so for you to avoid this make sure that you do the market research before you indulge in your farming practices uh, the second thing that you need to research on are suppliers for example when i was starting my strawberry production i didn't look for the information that i needed for me to start the business so i, I was recommending the materials by my trainer and he gave me the number so i was so trusting i just went and buy, bought the materials pvc paper is supposed to take you for two to three years but i was given a paper that was used for construction you can imagine one year down the line after getting burnt by the sunshine for six months the paper is already torn if i had done my due diligence of going to do a research of the suppliers of the materials that i required meeting farmers knowing exactly what is required i would still be using that pvc paper now i've been removing it section by section as according to how it is getting torn because the paper was not intended for that use so make sure that you do the market research the crop research uh, what we have been doing uh, in my previous videos is more of a crop research the other thing that you need to consider in your market research is the cost of production we do not consider the cost of production you heard that so and so is planting uh, managu and the managus are having a high demand at this moment so you go ahead and without considering the kind of uh, cost that you're going to incur you just start uh, planting your managu by the end of the production action period you realize that even the money that you had invested in your farm it is not even a, a fraction of what you got out of the market why because you do not consider the cost of production when i talk about the cost of production i'm talking about the manure that you require the water the kind of labor that you will be required you do the calculations before you even go and plant so that you can know if i plant this amount of uh, managu if i plant in a section of let's say a quarter piece of land how much money am i expecting to get from this how much money am i going to use for me to get this is this the profit i am looking for is this what i want to do when you do this kind of research it will help you to reduce using money in the wrong businesses i have used money in a wrong business for example we started with a button mushrooms at this time button mushrooms was a high pitch button was selling so well we didn't do our due diligence of going to do a market research we didn't go to meet any farmer we didn't go for training for us to know what was going on so we just used to give people money for them to do the business for us so it's like we were giving people our money to come and do a mushroom business in our place and for them to take the profits even 
yani, I don't know how we, we did it, but we still did it. So at the end of the day, we realized that we were making losses because the structure was not right. We were paying way too high amount of labor. We were buying the materials for way too high prices and we didn't know the process uh, for the mushrooms to be produced. So when you do your market research, cost of production that you're going to use, you're going to avoid these unnecessary losses. We say that if you know what you are doing, the risk is very low and the returns are very huge. The next thing that you do a uh, research on is profits that you're going to be gaining from your agricultural practices. For example, in a 40 by 100 piece of land, when I plant my managu, I know that when selling at a kg at 30 shillings, I know that I'm going to receive at least 9,000 from this piece of land. So whatever that I am going to put in, I am going to ensure that it is below 9,000 shillings so that the profit can be 9,000 shillings between five and nine thousand shillings that way i will be working on a good profit margin once you have realized what you're going to be growing you plan for example when you start supplying you want to keep consistency in the market this is something that i have suffered from i started growing my managu but i did not plan so after the first eight weeks my managus are depleted. I do not have anything to sell to the person I was selling to. So what happens? This consumer will go and look for a market elsewhere, which is not what I want as a business person in the agricultural industry. I want when I get hold of a customer, I keep supplying every month, every month I am supplying. So what do you do to ensure that you are a consistent supplier? Plant in blocks. For example, if you have an acre piece of land, instead of planting the entire area with your managu, and then you will be walking to the bank so happy that you're going to fetch uh, millions of money from that acre piece of land, it is going to be good. But what about the growth season? What about when it ends? What are you going to be doing? Instead of that, you can avoid it by planting in a quarter piece of land. You give it a period of a spacing of like one month. Uh, you plant in another one. You give it a spacing of one month. You plant in another one. So you have four quarters. By the end of the first grow season, you'll be having a plant supply. You know, when this one adds, you, go, you jump into this one. Then this one, you start preparing and then you start planting. When you're harvesting on this one, this one is uh, about to be harvested. So when this one diminishes, the other one is already uh, ready to be harvested that way you're going to be in market forever like you're going to be in market year in year out month in month out and that is what you want for your agricultural businesses you know sometimes we give up that uh, we are planting our crops but at a, a short period of time we have nothing to supply to our consumers that is a very huge challenge the other thing in planning is uh, to ensure that we have numbers in strawberry production most buyers they want their production in high quantities and have 1000 strawberries in one season that way you're going to be harvesting in large quantities now that you understand what you're going to grow you know the market that you're going to supply to you have planned your land so that you can ensure that there is a continuous production and a continuous supply the next thing you do is to develop a team this can be the people that you're going to be working with you can either choose to have a uh, you start your business right away as a business you go to the registration office you register your business you do everything or you can just decide to just do a, like a pilot study of what the market is going to be like of what growing is going to be like so you just have the number of laborers that you're going to use the equipment that you require for you to be able to produce accordingly for them to help you reach your goals so this will vary according to the kind of crop that you're going to grow and according to the space that you're going to use for the planting after developing a team number four tip is to keep records you have to keep records of when you started to plant while you're going to be taking care of the crops, for instance, the fertilizer application periods, the spraying periods for the pesticides, the spraying of the fungicides, you have to keep a record of all these statements so that you can understand your crop perfectly. Because you might know what you're going to be doing, but the actual uh, crop is the one that is going to give you the better results. So you have to keep a record of when the plant was planted, when how long did it take in the garden how long did it take to produce if i planted like a hundred strawberries how long did it take for them to grow how many survived how many didn't what was the best uh 
uh, like what was the major pest that was affecting me so that the next season you're going to be having a better and a smoother way of growing your crop the next record that you have to keep is the financial records for example how many customers are you currently having how many were you able to supply to how much profit did you gain did you make losses did it even uh, give you any money at the end of the day these are the financial records that you need to keep. You also need to have a budget. Like, I am going to use this amount of money in this amount of period so that I can gain this amount of profit. So the financial records are the balance sheet, the income flow statement, you know, all of these statements, which are very essential in improving and showing the quality of your business both for you and if you're going to be seeking monetary funds from either an institution an angel investor government funds you know yes tip number five is seeking opportunities so once you have the managu or the kind of crop that you're going to be growing it is doing well it is thriving it is time for you to look for opportunities i'll give you an opportunity in the strawberry production you can sell fruits you can sell splits you can sell runners you can conduct training you can open a youtube channel and start teaching people how you're doing your business the value addition for your strawberries for example you can do jam strawberry juice and there are institutions in the country that are helping people to do this one of them is kildry it is based uh in the in kenya and it is helping people to learn value addition for whatever thing kind of crop that you're going to be growing so take advantage of this and make sure that you keep learning keep improving your knowledge you know it doesn't matter what kind of uh, level of school you went up to it doesn't matter especially in the agriculture industry what matters is how are you improving your knowledge how are you increasing what you already know so that you can increase your profits of the farm by equipping yourself with uh, knowledge more information more data updating yourself knowing how you can seek more opportunities either from the existing crop that you're having right now or from other crops for example let's say you have been growing strawberries for the past uh three years and maybe you want to change and see something that is more profitable or you have a bare piece of land that you can add another crop and see how it is going to perform in your area another opportunity is having farm equipment for example if it is in the area where people do irrigation like moya where there are so many rivers you can lease and rent your irrigation systems to other farmers who do not have the same during the dry season this way you're going to be gaining passive income from the equipment so look at your farm what equipment can you lease what piece of uh, information do you need to gain what other things can you sell from whatever you're currently doing for instance a pottery farmer can sell the eggs they can sell meat they can sell uh, manure you know keep seeking opportunities and learn to train people whatever you are doing don't be like you want to stay in that business for yourself alone uh -uh. there's so many people who need to eat the COVID-19 has taught us so much about the food industry people were retrenched from your job opportunities but what happened in the food industry people continued to eat people will always need food so the more you produce the better if they are not selling to the people around you why is it that you're not selling is it that they are selling your goods so expensively is it that they do not know the benefits of eating what you are, you are growing why aren't you selling to the people around you why ask yourself these questions and they are going to be bringing you more opportunities on how you can grow and increase your productivity in your agri businesses always review your work for instance, you have already grown your crops. Are they performing well? Are they giving you the profits that you had anticipated? What other crops can I add? How will I increase the uh, productivity for the next season? Which months had the highest demand? Which months had the lowest demand? Did I make profit during the high demand period? Is this the amount of profit that I should be making? What are other farmers doing about the same? What can uh, I use to reduce the cost of production? For example, there are so many natural ways that you can use to reduce the cost of buying fertilizers. You know, fertilizers are very essential in our crop production, especially for leafy vegetables like kales, managu, spinach, saga, 
all of these vegetables they need fertilizers so instead of buying fertilizers every now and then why can't you plant something like tithonia tithonia is going to give you fertilizer from the leaves something like stinging nettle it has a lot of nutrients for your crops something like comfrey it has a lot of potassium for your strawberries yani look for alternatives for how you're going to reduce the cost of production and how you're going to increase the amount of profits that you're going to be getting from your farm so guys i am very happy for this session and if you enjoy subscribe share these videos to more farmers who want to thrive in their agri businesses so that we can all increase the profits that you're going to be making and we can give people the quality foods that you are growing i know you are passionate about agriculture i am passionate about agriculture and i want us to succeed in this venture it doesn't matter even if you have a small land if you do a proper planning you can be profitable you can benefit and you can grow in your agri businesses always remember to stay focused i will remind you the story of the man and the donkey we see this man was given this uh, donkey they are carrying the luggage with the donkey they meet people they ask uh, why are you tiring the donkey they take the, the luggage and carry it at the end of the day they ended up carrying the donkey instead of the donkey carrying them why because they were listening to everything everybody was telling them so you have to stay focused if you have planned and you're sure that this is the plan that is going to take you somewhere do not listen to whatever whatever that is going to come up in your way listen but do not make it jeopardize whatever that you're going to be doing make sure you stick to your plan until to the point that you see this this i need maybe to change all this i need to you know take it to the next level be confident about what you're doing be passionate about agriculture and i'm sure that you're going to succeed if you have not started your agri businesses start today if it is the financial uh, reasons that are making you not to start start small i can promise you that you can start small and make that period your learning period i started small i learned i failed so far so good i am passionate and i am positive that this is a business and it is the business that i need to keep so guys thank you so much for watching thank you for being here with me thank you for always supporting me remember to subscribe share comment let me know what you think let me know what other tips that you're using to increase your productivity in your agri business and until next time bye bye